What is up guys, Rezzy here with a brand new video, and today we're going to be going over How to Wish Wall 2.0. This is a remake from a previous video that I made in the past, and I cannot wait to show you my secrets that I've held for so many years. As you may know, I've done this raid over 2,000 times so you don't have to. This video will cover almost every single strategy that I know of and every secret that I use in my Last Wish Carry runs. Pay attention to some of the moves that I make and where I run because these are normally the fastest ways to get to a certain location and the most efficient ways without dying. When you're doing a wish wall, you can skip the entire runaround part where the crystals are by jumping up to that rock. For this next area, you can skip the entire jump around and simply climb up this wall. And it only takes about four total jumps just to get up here. When you get up to the wish wall, a lot of people like to use auto rifles, submachine guns, divinity, or any other trace rifle. As you can see on screen, these are the splits that you want to make your fire team separate into. One player will be blue, red, pink, green, purple, and yellow. Now, I will be honest, this is a very old strategy, and nowadays, we don't use it anymore. In today's world, we split up the wish wall by two to three people. This is the oldest trick in the book, sliding forwards and sword swinging forwards so that you don't fall down into the hole that opens up once you stand on your plate. After you do this, you're able to stay up top so that you can hear where Riven's about to go. Wherever you hear her steps, you know not to go there. What you're about to see next is sped up because it takes forever. This is an old trick that LFGs used to do in a bunch of my runs and it still happens to this day. If you run far back enough, you'll get joining allies and you'll spawn up top once all of your teammates are on their plates. It is slow and it is horribly annoying when you see somebody take a journey all the way back to spawn. There's a trick called fast drop. It's where you jump before your play opens up so that you can accelerate faster. This next trick we're going to do is where we walk into the room, specifically crystal side, and we look at the wall, this wall right there. When or if you see this shadow, that means that your damage is on this side. If you do not see the shadow, you go this way. On this wall, there's a joining allies location, but if you jump up here, there's also a joining allies location that the people can't hit you across because they tend to do that. If you are on the right side, this is the order that you want to kill the adds. Kill the middle scions that originally spawned in, and make sure that you kill the ones that spawned on your closest side. And then turn around to kill the hobgoblins that just now spawned in. There are always two sets of those. Now personally, I do not have the god roll forbearance. If you do, it should have chain reaction and ambitious assassin. The adds spawn in from an order of left, middle, to right. You will see this every run and it does not change. Before damage, there are a total of 6 add spawns, and then on the 7th, Riven comes out. Almost nobody spawn kills the adds, so what you're going to do is take over for that position. Riven's heart works wonderfully if you do not have a chain reaction forbearance. If you pick it up and shoot it, it will explode in an area of effect. Where I just shot my gun is where you want your well to be placed for damage phase. Now we're going to move on to sending mechanic. This is when you go to the other side of where the people are doing damage and you get the stun, whether it's the spike or the fire. Place a well down, bait out the spike. When the spike comes down, shoot it with a 4 times charged Izanagi's Burden. The easier, more preferred option is the fire. You put a well down, wait till he stops shooting, shoot it in the mouth when it turns red. Now moving on to the loadouts. You guaranteed need a Lucent Blade mod, any grenade launcher mods that will help you in Queen's Walk, Concussive Dampener and Powerful Friends for that extra mobility, put a Taking Charge mod on, and make sure you have a Mobility Exotic with as many Riven's Curse mods as you can. Since we're splitting this up into sections, you need Tractor Cannon, a Forbearance, and anything to shoot the Wish Wall with in your primary section. For the subclass portion, you will use the Fragment, Ember of Torches, Ember of Solace, Ember of Blistering, and Ember of Singeing. I always like to bring along a healing grenade for my teammates and for the quick regen, Icarus Dash, and Heat Rises. Now, let's get into the damage. Put your well down, track your cannon the boss, and shoot your forbearance shots. Not at the exact same time. Shoot one, let it bounce in this exact corner, and then reload and shoot the next one. Unfortunately, Tractor Cannon does not last this entire time, so you need to reapply it after shooting 5 shots of Forbearance. For the Nova Bomb, you want to run Cataclysmic, Healing Rift, Burst Goliath, Placket Singularity, Scatter Grenade, Child of the Old Gods, Chaos Accelerant, 
And for the fragments, it doesn't really matter, but personally, I like to use Echo of Dilation for the mobility, Echo of Undermining because of the weakness, Echo of Expulsion for the intellect, but mainly because the adds explode after I kill them. This is equal to faster ad clear. For the Warlocks that aren't the well, you want to throw your Nova Bomb right before damage opens up like this. Getting into the Lament combos, there are many people that use different ones, and I can tell you a few people that I know that have thousands of clears that all use different methods. Specifically for this one, I did 5 light attacks and then 1 charged heavy, 4 light attacks without charge, and then 3 charged light attacks with a heavy, and then I repeated that. I will admit, looking at it in video, it's very scuffed. If you are a hunter, this is how you should throw your blade barrage. Notice how I stayed in the same location, and I did not go flying after casting my super. This is how you should not cast your super hunters. Notice how I'm literally riding Riven's arm like a pony. This cuts out time for damage, and you will eventually lose in the long run. This is Wither Horde, Falling Guillotine, Titan, Thunder Crash. Stick a Wither Horde. Thunder Crash, look up. Here's another replay. Look up, Thunder Crash, and do you see those double numbers that spawned up on the head? This is one of my most hidden secrets. You get so much more damage just by looking up with your Thunder Crash after casting it. Ideally, you Wither Horde the ground before she comes out, Wither Horde her arm the second she's about to open up damage, heavy attack with your falling guillotine, and then light attack until your heavy energy regens. If I decided to use that combination rather than the weird one I used in the video, I would have hit a million. Now, let's imagine you just finished damage phase. You switch your loadout to a Eager's Edge Sword and your Mobility Exotic. You tell your entire fire team to not move the second they get teleported and to not shoot any adds that spawn in. Hopefully they listen to you and you're able to move up and do the skip yourself. I'm going to now run through the steps with you. Spawn in and immediately switch to your third person view sword. The moment you're in front of the ad spawns, pop your heat rises and center yourself in between the two phalanxes. When you are in the middle of the two phalanxes, you want to make sure that they aim and point at you. The second you see them aiming and charging up their burst ability, you jump and you activate your burst glide. Again, approach them, wait for them to spawn in, pop your heat rises, get ready to jump, jump up, burst, and look all the way up to where your destination is. I will say the best explanation is simply just watching it over and over and over again. If you don't understand by what I said, if you try to replicate exactly what I did there, you'll have it in no time. After killing Riven, you're going to run into her mouth and you can still jump in the second her opening turns black. When you get in there, you can use either 4th Horseman, Xenophage, a shotgun, Worldline Zero, or a super to kill the heart. Moving on to Queen's Walk. If you ever do this in the throat to me or anybody else, you are going to get kicked from the fire team. There are other methods of launching people in Queen's Walk rather than heavy attacking with Eager's Edge. This is called sorting the heart. As you're about to pick up the heart, the moment it's almost full, you start sword swiping and you keep spamming it and do not stop. Only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed, so if you like this video, click that subscribe button. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. Enjoy the video. If you don't know what Queen's Walk is, it's where you pretty much carry a ball around that has a timer, and when the timer runs out, it chooses somebody else. That person who does not have the heart anymore gets teleported into a room where they have to pick up these pillars of light that reset the next person's timer. The people inside of the room have to follow this map that I just drew on screen. The goal with killing adds is to get rid of all of the phalanxes and the centurions mainly before you focus on the thrall. When you drop out of Riven's mouth, you're able to shoot a few forbearance shots to clear out a wave of phalanxes. When you're in Queen's Walk, you want to stay in front of whoever has the heart. You never want to be caught in the back because, who knows, somebody could line them forwards or the person could run right by you without you noticing. It's very easy to get caught in the back. You want to clear out all of the phalanxes in this room before your runner gets up to them. I have a shot where I shoot across the map and kill every single phalanx, and I've coined this to be the resi shot. In this room, specifically, the phalanxes can shoot you into walls and physics all of your friends, so that is why I push forwards and I kill all of them before the runner can get even close. Most of the time, all it takes is one forbearance shot to kill every single phalanx, whether it be in the middle or in the far back. 
No matter what you do, whenever you're holding the heart, you always want to keep moving forwards and never stand still. In this clip I used Martyr's Retribution because this used to be my favorite gun to kill them with and it worked wonderfully. I've gotten so used to shooting these for such a long time, because of muscle memory I'm able to hit them every time. Notice how I stay in front of the person with the heart. If the phalanxes were here they would have destroyed this poor person with the heart. Never try to just jump over them because this is what will happen. You get smacked into a wall, absolutely obliterated. When you're approaching the knight, you really want to drop the heart right where it spawns in at, but since I had a reset, we push towards the wall. This is what we call a volt skip, and I'll explain this in a moment. The person who is holding the heart during volt skip must do exactly what I just did on screen. Now the person who is actually doing volt skip will jump above them while they're doing that and jumping up and down. They will then wait until they get refreshed so they no longer have creeping darkness, and meanwhile they'll be doing that. In this case, the Titan doing Volt Skip will throw a grenade at the wall, right below the middle portion of the Taken Orb. If you placed your grenade correctly, all you have to do is jump straight up and then land on the other side of the wall. You will wait for your teammate to lose his heart or for him to die on that wall and then pick it up on the other side. To go back over the Titan, all you do is you center yourself, wait to get reset for your Creeping Darkness, throw your grenade to the lower middle portion of the Taken Orb, jump on top of it and jump straight up and over. Once you make it over, try to reset yourself as fast as you can. For the Warlock, you're going to do the exact same jump up as the Titan would and pop your heat rises while you're on the bridge. Do not pull out your Eager's Edge sword while you're jumping. What you need to do now is if you mess up, reset yourself immediately and then jump on the small little flower pot next to the Taken Orb and then jump upwards straight up and Icarus Dash up so that you can get on top of the Taken Orb and then jump over that wall. Sword swipe if you have to and stay on top of that ball. Make sure that you get over as fast as you can. If you are going to do the skip with your sword out, have it out before you take the jump. Sometimes you don't even need to look at where the heart is. You can just hold X and then automatically pick it up if you are on 9 creeping darkness and it is a rush. This is called a fast drop. A fast drop is when you jump before the opening so that you accelerate faster and you're moving forwards at the same time. A fast drop is any drop that does not play the audio. If you do not hear any dialogue, you know you've done it properly. When you're on the other side of the wall waiting for the pickup, you need to tell the person to come kiss you on the lips or to come a little bit closer to you. When I'm waiting, I back up so that I don't get teleported with the heart. If the person with the heart turns the other way around, they will not teleport you if you're standing too close. These are all examples of fast drops and I really do hope that you utilize this because if you are too slow and you need to go really, really fast, this can save about six to seven seconds off of your drop. Thank you so much for watching. I put so much effort into this video and I really do hope that you enjoyed.